I see. I see. So after five minutes, you think you know me. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Stewie Griffin said what we were all thinking. Ugh, I can't deal with anything until I've had my after nap coffee. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most memorable and relatable observation made by Family Guy's youngest and most astute character. Which Stewie comments spoke to you the most? Tell us what you're thinking in the comments below. Number 10. The Death Star's weakness should have been fixed. And if you shoot a laser into this hole, uh, the station blows up. Whoa, 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 that sounds like a pretty big design flaw there. In the first installment of Family Guy's Star Wars trilogy spoof, Stewie portrays Darth Vader in a meeting about the rebel threat to the Death Star. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. That is fantastic, terrific work, so no weaknesses at all, huh? No. No. One officer declares the station virtually impenetrable, aside from a certain peculiar design choice. Sure enough, Darth Stewie is not the first person to point out the absurdity of leaving one of the Death Star's exhaust ports exposed. Still, everything in this exchange is so undeniably witty, from the claim of intentional aesthetic choice to the prospect of resale value. Can't we board it up or you know, put some plywood over it or something? Well, that would look terrible. I mean, we gotta think about resale. Resale? What are you talking about? Darth Stewie echoes viewers' sense that defeat could have been prevented with a little less creativity in the Death Star's design, and a little less corner cutting in the sphere's construction. I find your lack of faith disturbing. That property is in a prime location. 20 minutes to the beach, 20 minutes to downtown. There's nothing to do downtown. Number 9. Anyone can claim to be a photographer. After first meeting Jillian, Stewie mercilessly makes fun of Brian for choosing beauty over brains in his love life. I want some more of Jillian's delicious lemonade. I know, it's good, right? I just wish they didn't have to kill so many lemons to make it. Oh, this is fun, huh? Brian tries to defend his girlfriend based on her artistic talents, but that doesn't hold much for Stewie. The assumption that anyone can claim to be a professional photographer is obviously unfair. Ooh, you took a black and white picture of a lawn chair and its shadow and developed it at Save On. You must be so brooding and deep. There's plenty of artistic standard in the medium, but there is something to be said about attaching a professional title to something that is largely a hobby for most. And that was especially prevalent rhetoric at the time of this joke. Stewie's snappy rant against photography charlatans has become a favorite among fans, even if it was not appreciated by all. Dude, that was painful. What are you doing here? Number 8. What's touching in movies can be creepy in reality. Brian, that car killed you. And when it did, a little part of me died as well. I couldn't live without you. A three-episode arc in which Brian appears to be killed off ends with Stewie going back in time to save his friend's life. Stewie then disappears with his timeline after explaining the situation. That Christmas, Brian gifts a photo to commemorate his friendship and sacrifice, a feat he neglected to mention to his timeline Stewie. Brian, it's, it's wonderful. Thank you. Well, you gave me the greatest gift of all. I'll tell you about it sometime. Let's face it, sentimental moments like these can come off really creepy out of context. Brian's dramatic gesture may be poignant, but constantly staring at the friend who saved your life is still staring. All I can say, Brian, is you've been making really creepy eye contact with me all morning and I want it to stop right now. Stewie's assertive response also reminds viewers that no matter how much they missed Brian, he's still, you know, Brian. Number 7. Poking fun at cliched frat boys. If he wants to throw hands, I'll throw hands! It's love at first sight when Stewie gets a new babysitter named LaDawn. However, on top of being so much older, she's already spoken for. Whatever the viewers may think when they first meet Jeremy, the jealous Stewie says it all and then some. Now go back to the quad and resume your hacky sack tourney! I'm not gonna lie down for some frat boy bastard with his damn Tiva sandal! This rant is considered an especially memorable one for Family Guy, partly for a notable reference to the show's arch rival, The Simpsons. Besides the name drop, Stewie's scathing observations of the sort of frat boy culture Jeremy appears to represent are so specific and detailed. It's difficult not to commiserate with him. Yes, we all love Mr. Plow. Oh, you've got the song memorized, do you? So does everyone else! That is exactly the kind of idiot you see at Taco Bell at one in the morning. We all know exactly the kind of dude he's referring to. Number 6. We need to talk about Herbert. When Spies Like Us stars Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase come to Quahog on real matters of national security, they ask Brian and Stewie if they've noticed any suspicious individuals. 
the audience can think of one person, as can Stewie. Herbert the Pervert is notorious, at least with viewers, for his aggressive pursuit of less than suitable companions. It's a trip to see how many red flags one of the most controversial and popular Family Guy characters can raise without Kohagians noticing. That's a nice muscly throwing arm you got there. Uh, thanks. Got a nice tip for you. As it turns out, though, one of the town's youngest and smartest residents is not so naive. However, many people are aware of Herbert's hijinks. Stewie reminds us that as long as we keep laughing, he's not going anywhere. Gosh, gosh, by gosh, it's a brand new paper boy. That's a mighty full sack you're carrying. Piss off, you perverted old freak. Number 5. Cancel Culture Fatigue Cancel culture catches up to Stewie when a tweet about one of his favorite pop stars is misconstrued. Oink, oink, my favorite pig. <laughs> Overwhelmed by a sudden onslaught of hate, online and off, Stewie tracks down the singer for a private resolution to the misunderstanding. Instead of finding a quintessential social media narcissist, he knocks one of the most divisive phenomena of our time down a peg. Stewie then takes to the stage to indict toxic fandom as a new religiosity. When did celebrity effectively become the new religion? Temperamental pop stars shouldn't be deciding what we think and who we like or hate. It's a bit of a dated rant now, sure, but Stewie's confrontation with fanaticism in the social media age expresses something real about viewers' exhaustion with cancel and celebrity culture going too far. Of course, the speech hardly converted true believers. Boo! Meeber rules! Pretzel the baby! I'm one of her adult fans. Number 4. He-Man and lion -O. During some playtime with action figures, Stewie pits He-Man against Lion-O in a friendly sparring match. Prepare to be bested on the battlefield, Lion-O. Oh, I don't think so, He-Man. Ow! Oh, I'm sorry, did I punch you too hard? It's not long before the two muscular warriors get a bit too friendly. While this does little to detract from the rhetoric that sexualities deviating from heteronormative standards are instilled rather than natural, there is something to be said about the odd sexualization of children's characters and toys. Oh, stop it. You're the one with the sick abs. God, my mouth is watering just looking at you. Yeah, that's right. You buy your kids ridiculously homoerotic dolls and then ask what happened? Stewie calls out the hypocrisy of giving children Hasbro heroes with the ideal male physique to play with, and reminds intolerant parents of gay sons that their attempts to endorse hypermasculine images may have just backfired. Explain that to your god. Number 3. We're not as smart as we think. Tensions flare up after Stewie and Chris get lost in the woods, but Stewie seems to break it with words of wisdom. I came to the woods because I wished to live deliberately and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. This beautiful monologue is lifted from Henry David Thoreau's classic book, Walden. Stewie hoped that this went without saying, but when he gives the audience a multiple-choice quiz on the quote's author, the fabricated results are rather disappointing. The suggestion that many viewers would overwhelmingly attribute the quote to joke answer Thornton Mellon is… probably pretty accurate. Wow. You know who that is? You know who Thornton Mellon… first of all, it was Henry David Thoreau, but do you know who Thornton Mellon is? That was Rodney Dangerfield's character in Back to School. You feel good about yourselves? It's a hysterical gag for Thoreau and Rodney Dangerfield fans alike. Oh, you left out a bunch of stuff. As for the rest of us, Stewie would likely say that we should consider getting back to school ourselves. This is why the other countries are beating us, you know. So, you know, you got only yourself to blame. Number 2. Modernizing the Show one of the more nuanced Family Guy episodes is all about Stewie going to therapy after he pushes a fellow preschooler. I only push Tyler down the stairs because I like him and I'm afraid he won't like me back. One of the most striking breakthroughs for the viewers comes when he explains the reason for the push. Stewie's ambiguous sexuality has been a long-running implication on the show. But this notable monologue clues audiences in on his own confusion about who he like-likes. You know, sometimes I don't know where I fit in. I, I just... I, I just want to be like everybody else, but... Though it's not the coming out everyone was hoping for, it's a healthy reminder that sexuality is a spectrum, as are most things in life. Plus, we get a really awesome unraveling of his character. I'm sure you live for the coming out sessions. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Brian's novel is all talk. 
Brian's pretenses of being a serious writer have always been a nuisance for Family Guy fans. I could use a vacation. Oh, yes, because you've got such a heavy workload around here. Hmm. How you, uh, how you coming on that novel? When he says that he could use a vacation, Stewie responds with one of his all-time greatest put-downs. This hilariously sarcastic scrutiny of Brian's progress with his novel sums up most people's feelings about writers who always claim to be working on something but never have anything to show for it. Seems to me you should spend less time working for the paper and more time working on that novel you've been working on. It's uncomfortably real for those experiencing writer's block six days a week and super relatable to the rest of us who are familiar with the more pompous kind of authors. It's the story of a boy who has to rescue his father, who's a pilot that's been taken captive by a militant Islamic country. <laughs> That's the movie Iron Eagle. This little rant also reflected a turning point in how Family Guy treats Stewie's intelligence. It's an iconic display of Stewie's snarkiness and shows just how bitingly observant the baby is. At the end, your uh, main character is uh, richer for the experience? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you got to... No, no, you, you deserve some time off. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.